Hello, this is Trust Focused Podcast called Trustcast. Welcome to our Trustcast. Listening podcast with Dr. Adela Drozdibov, produced at Queensland University of Technology, Center for Future Enterprise. Trustcast is produced as part of our research efforts focused on trust governance and management. Welcome everyone. This is the second episode of our Trustcast. In this episode, we are hosting Elena Kvochko. Elena is CTO or Chief Trust Officer at SAP. Hello, Elena. Hello, how are you? Thank you for asking, I'm well. I'm actually very excited to start this podcast. Now, how we usually start is by introducing our guest. Is it okay if I do a short introduction? Yes, yes, absolutely. We can, we can do that. Great. So in addition to her role as CTO at SAP, which she's holding at the moment, Elena has previously worked on trust and security in financial industry including her roles at Bank of America and Barclays Bank. Elena is also acting as a fellow educator and academic, and she's teaching at Cornell University. Her love for discoveries is visible through multiple patents pending in Bank of America, where she was named as a top inventor in 2021. Elena's work was published in Harvard Business Review, Wall Street Journal, The New York Times, Forbes, The White House Cybersecurity Report, and so on. Elena was also recognized by Fortune's magazine 40 Under 40. So congratulations on these achievements, Elena, and welcome. Perfect. Thank you, Adela. It's a wonderful introduction. Thank you. You're welcome. It's definitely well-deserved introduction. Now, let us start with overarching definition of trust. What trust means to you? What trust means to SAP? For us, trust is the confidence that commitments will be kept. And trust is built through providing that transparency and information that a lot of customers are seeking. Mm -hmm. So this is really good definition. And it's good to start from a very general, comprehensive understanding of trust. Now, when we think about it in the context of SAP, how do you ensure this is happening? How do you ensure there is transparency and commitments are kept? To achieve that, we have developed a four pillar strategy, which is secure by design, secure by default, secure in validation, and trust through transparency. We work to build secure software, foster a security minded culture, remediate vulnerabilities, and listen to our customers and third parties' feedback. Now, all of these responsibilities are falling into the basket of one role that's a CTO role. I had an intention to ask you are you aware? of SAP's motivation behind creating this role, but then you corrected me saying that you actually created the role. So now when we know that, can you tell me more about motivation behind establishing our chief trust office, history of establishment, its purpose and strategies you apply? Absolutely. So we created the chief trust office uh, in uh, 2020 to provide support for our customers throughout their customer journey on all the matters relating to security, privacy, and compliance, security of our products. We found that creating that one-stop shop for them through the SAP Trust Center, and we call it My Trust Center as well, that has been a great step. Uh, We've received a lot of positive feedback. We've published so much new content there that our customers can go to and, and find the answers that they were seeking in So our department is dedicated to strengthening trust with our customers by providing seamless communication, transparency with them, and shaping the global security narrative. And we make so much information publicly available to our customers that was never available before, from white papers to videos to just one-on-one support that our customers can use and leverage, and they can reach out to us at any point if there's any confusion. We believe in over-communicating with customers. We believe in providing them with all of the information they need to make informed decisions about their security. And we make this information available through the SAP Trust Center, which includes information about our audit certifications, security policies, our tools, and other aspects relating to SAP security, privacy, and compliance. We've also established dedicated support available by request, which provides a more personalized experience for our customers. 
So in this personalized approach, is this something you are approaching on the case-to-case basis with the high personal touch? Or there is another direction you're taking this to? Actually, I would say that automation is a key direction for us, you know, because I think that scaling through manual efforts can only lead you so far, but providing automated ways, you know, we're experimenting with video-based audits as we, as we call them, we're experimenting with video-based meetings where we basically can look at everything that customers want to know and can record that and distribute that mm-hmm. versus for instance, having to conduct multiple meetings and take time on customers' calendars. I agree. Going into the case by case and manual efforts would definitely be demanding in terms of time and availability of your staff. However, utilizing automation to apply personal approach can also be challenging by itself. So how do you generate new ideas to provide solutions for this task? We developed a board level initiative to develop a security culture, a security culture that welcomes open dialogue, encourages conversation, prioritizes accountability, and uplifts the employees to ask the difficult questions. We make significant investments in our employees' professional development. We identify diverse and early talent. We create an environment where everyone understands their role in securing their valuable data and enterprise of all sizes. Does this mean that this board initiative is actually used to generate new ideas for automation, but also other possible practices? Exactly, yes. And if it's a really great idea, you know, how we can deliver more at scale, for instance, we're automating a lot of the... Uh, customer support and trust support based on the number of inquiries that we're getting. Our employees are getting the budget for a pilot to implement a pilot, for instance. And if the pilot works, we're scaling them, uh, their pilot efforts. So absolutely, you know, it's providing the platform where they can speak, uh, bring their ideas to the all hands, uh, where they can share that with other employees, providing them the budgets for pilot projects assessing how the pilot projects are going, and then collaborating with other organizations to scale that and to bring those best ideas into practice. Mm -hmm. So if we go one step back now and speak about the role of Chief Trust Officer again, how would you describe overarching role of CTO and how would you describe significance of this role? The Chief Trust Officer signifies what drives today's business climate, which is accountability and transparency. I think if we look back before the age of the internet, customers judged companies based on the value of their product and they measured their success with growth of their profits. But now, you know, that's not necessarily uh, enough. Now companies and customers store and process most sensitive information, most sensitive data, and there is much more at stake at any given moment, right? Which is that notion of trust. Customers as we know, tend to trust technologies they rely on, and they hope that companies that providing that capability have already the best controls to protect their data. And we hope to fulfill that that goal because profits and losses are no longer the only measure of success for the industry. It's also about the ethics and the trust, and this is what we see our mission as. So we are, of course, tasked with maintaining trust and confidence with the customer base by ensuring that their data is appropriately treated, we're engaging with customers, we're bringing their concerns to the rest of the C-suite. And I think, you know, when a company creates a chief trust office and chief trust officer as a role and relies on people process and technology aspects, it's a big indication that they're committed to providing their customers with that trustworthy service, their, that trustworthy product that follows the best practices, the good practices that achieves and maintains industry recommended uh, certifications and, and customer expectations. This is really interesting. When you say profits and losses are not anymore the only measure of success, but trust and ethics need to be accounted for. Yes, yes. I would like to highlight that a security magazine and other publications reported that, you know, there's still a lot of work that global brands need to do to maintain trust with the customers. And as the threat landscape continues to evolve, We seek to differentiate SAP on trust and on transparency, in addition to, of course, the quality of our products and services. To increase our scope and strategic responsibilities and really wide-scale differentiation and transformation, we created the Chief Trust Office, and this is our purpose. So would you say this means that you are dynamically following the trends and the market? Yes, we're evolving together with the industry, and we evolve together with the customers. Hmm. 
You have just mentioned one really interesting concept here, evolving together with the industry and with the customer. Can you please elaborate on internal processes that need to be conducted in order to ensure this synchronized evolution, let's call it like that? That's a great question, Adela. I think um, I think the landscape evolves so fast that it requires all of us to be curious. It requires all of us to constantly uh, educate ourselves. And I find that learning from my team and learning from our employees has been such a great uh, source of just new ideas and inspiration for me personally and, and for the team. Uh, so clearly, you know, we all have access to so much information and we do embrace that. But I found that learning from my team and learning together with my team has been highly beneficial. We've also established customer advisory boards uh, and we have ways to directly collect customer feedback that we can operationalize or adjust based on their perspective. We have set a number of KPIs where we measure ourselves and our performance and we see where we need to move faster, where we need to adjust the approach and you know how we can definitely take that idea of trust to that next level. So through just measuring ourselves, through listening to each other and to our customers, I feel like we're creating that ever changing environment where we can all grow and grow together with the industry and grow together with our customers and provide them better and better service. I really like how our entire conversation is shaping around the future. We're not only discussing something like knee-jerk reaction to customer demand or industry changes, we're speaking about evolving together with them. So, staying on this course, I would like actually to ask you, do you have any other programs that are looking into the future, that are future-oriented, in addition to ones we already mentioned? And... Is it all really focused only on consumer trust or are there are other relationships in which trust matters? We are very much focused on helping shape and build the capacities of the future generations of experts and, and leaders. We're very much focused on working together with the universities. We've established partnerships with a number of schools and universities where we really help create and foster the next generation. You know, we fund high school programs, we fund uh, scholarships, we work with universities to enable live streaming of security content that was not done before. We partner with historically black colleges and universities to increase not just the gender diversity, but also the racial representation across the sector. So from that perspective, we definitely go beyond the customers to make sure that we contribute back to the, to the industry. For us to give back, you know, we are working with universities to live stream the content that was previously limited to only a, a limited group of students or those who are on campus. So we're working on that and um, very much looking forward to new partnership opportunities, finding out what the future holds together with them and together with those um, amazing young, talented people. And as you said, absolutely internal trust is critical. Uh, in addition to all of the externally facing initiatives that our office uh, facilitates, we are responsible for creating and we love that. We're responsible for creating a lot of training materials, awareness materials for our developer uh, communities, the so communities of over 30,000 developers at SAP, for security professionals, for sales executives, for other executives, for board members that basically in every point of the SAP uh, journey and SAP customer lifecycle, we have the appropriate trust building measures and mechanisms and awareness mechanisms to establish that more long-term relationship with, uh, with our partners. <laughs> Elena, it seems that you find young people inspiring. Absolutely. Absolutely. You know, I think young people are very inspiring and we're not just, um, you know, waiting for that inspiration to happen. We're proactively seeking to find them and to invite them into our environments. I have opened an unlimited internship opportunities on my team. So if you just uh, Google it, you'll find that an internship opportunity in the chief trust office is available in pretty much every city in the United States at this point. And we do have other internship opportunities in Europe or elsewhere. We're working, working students in Europe, but um, we did open an unlimited internship opportunity. So we're always looking for that new and fresh talent, a new and fresh perspective, I should say, for us to uh, to really look at what we can do better right now and how we can build a better future. Some of our interns that have completed the internships have already become permanent employees with us and are doing great work uh, with us throughout the year. We're partnering with historically Black colleges and universities 
to contribute to being a diverse employer and really provide those opportunities to other uh, communities that we don't necessarily have access to uh, right now. We're proactively seeking to find those talented young people uh, there as well. That's great. Now, talking about dynamics in your team and the increase of the size of your team and the trends you're following and, and setting... Can you reflect on some challenges you're facing on this road? What would be the greatest challenges you face? Our greatest challenges? You know, I think um, our greatest challenges for my role and for my colleagues and for our industry is that as technology advances, so do the methods of attacks, you know, and we constantly monitor what is it that our customers are expecting from us, uh, what what we should be publishing for them and what new controls we have to introduce to provide that environment that they can trust. Uh, You know, and when it comes to security, everyone has a role to play. It's a shared responsibility model between users and the providers. We, of course, you know, have been innovating in different settings, especially over the last several years. Remote work has become much more common. Uh, It has presented a set of challenges, but also an opportunity for organizations to develop new approaches and new methods of working. This is definitely something we we try to embrace. I wouldn't say that it's a challenge, but this is something we've embraced quite successfully. Another challenge that I would like to highlight for us, but also for the industry, is the demand for cybersecurity professionals is growing so fast. The demand for privacy professionals is going so fast. So we found that training and recruiting employees and investing in them and providing them those opportunities for growth and learning will also help create a more secure environment. So you've asked me, um, you know, what can create more secure environments internally? That's definitely one of the big contributing factors. So I would say, you know, we're definitely looking at both internal challenges, internal opportunities, and what we can embrace as an innovation opportunity, as well as external factors. (laughs) It seems like we have a full SWOT analysis here. Now, continuing on this role in speaking about future and future directions, Let's go a bit deeper or a bit further about it. How do you see future trends developing? Do you still see technological field as a leader in these future trends? And how do we build for the future? How does the future look in the eyes of CTO of SAP? Absolutely. You know, I think building for the future and building the future, this is what we do in the technology industry, right? I feel like Technology and cybersecurity attracts dreamers, people who want to innovate and contribute and build better products and solutions. So we all are dreamers, and this is what we're building here. Obviously, you know, staying ahead of the threat because we're very much following and providing that secure environment is a great source of new ideas and thinking for us in terms of what we can adjust. But of course, thinking really far ahead into the future, I want to mention the conversation and the notion of the even the metaverse, right? How are we going to operate in the metaverse environment when all of us will have an avatar? Uh, you know, how will that impact the technology industry and the cybersecurity? So that's something that we're also starting to think about 10 years down the line. But really, that's the broad spectrum, you know, from most immediate deliver, deliverables that we need to complete very successfully successfully and deliver fast uh, to thinking, you know, two weeks from now or a year from now to really a few years from now and how we're going to operate in those future environments. And of course, I'm an inventor myself. You know, I have over 35 patents granted and pending at this point. So always thinking of what's to come next and how we can embrace that technology in a new way. This sounds very inspiring. And thank you for that, Elena. Finishing on a positive note, we are reaching the end of our podcast and our time together today. I would like to leave our listeners with your advice. What do you think is the one main thing chief trust officer or any other executive needs to know in order to lead their corporation or their business into the right direction? What would you say? You know, I think the one thing that would be useful for trust officers, but also for other executives is to remember that culture is defined by everyone. So depending on what goals and what what culture you're trying to set with your with your team, establishing that strong culture, establishing that vision requires the support, not just of you as a trust officer, but those beyond the C-suite, those beyond the manager roles, right? Managers and individual contributors should foster that mindset, you know, of transparency, accountability, and trust 
and then create that environment and culture that's welcoming to all, embraces change, encourages new ideas, and celebrates success. So of course we should start from the top, but then ensure that that company culture that we're trying to create and that you're trying to create can be powerful. That's of course why we developed those board level initiatives to develop a security culture that welcomes open dialogue, encourages a conversation, prioritizes accountability. And uh, we're hopeful that all these efforts that we're putting in place with fostering trust, with fostering trust for our customers will ultimately be reflected in our other KPIs. While of course, being conscious of the fact that of, and of all the other areas in which our strategy needs to be implemented to be successful. But we do hope that all of those efforts will show and provide a very useful, be an uplifting factor uh, that will boost all of other KPIs. And, and I hope that other organizations that are thinking about creating a trust office will th think about how to establish that culture that really promotes the new environment with the customers and gives them the information, the resources they need to become trusted partners and to become a great collaboration effort between the organization and the customers and the community in which they serve. Well, thank you, Elena. Thank you for these wonderful insights. I honestly hope future leaders will listen to this advice. I particularly liked how you shaped your conversation around culture and future being everyone's responsibility. Because yes, this is something we are all responsible for and we will all ultimately enjoy. Thank you again for being our guest in our second Trustcast episode and for this interesting conversation. Perfect. Well, thank you so much, Dalia. It's been wonderful. Thank you for uh, definitely innovative questions uh, that I had to think about. I absolutely appreciate the opportunity. Look forward to the podcast. And thank you very much to you and your colleagues for setting it up. Oh, you're welcome. And we're looking forward to new cooperation opportunities. I'd also like to thank our audience for their attention today. Please feel free to reach out, to send your suggestions, comments, or questions to contacts provided on our webpage. There is LinkedIn contact and email address. You're looking forward to your feedback. You were listening to second episode of Trust Focused Podcast called Trustcast, produced at Queensland University of Technology, Center for Future Enterprise by Dr. Adela Jostibov.